Hey guys and welcome back to a trade recap today on the S&P 500 futures chart. We're going to be talking all about ICT concepts and yeah, smart money techniques, price action, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, therefore we get started. So throughout today, if I turn on the session pro version 2, we see the new day open up right here, right at 6 p.m. New York local time. <clears throat> and we also formed a new week opening gap with Friday's closing price right here at uh, 4.55 and Sunday's opening price right here at 6 p.m. <clears throat> so this is the new week opening gap. I'm always monitoring it if it's not too small. If it's a super small new week opening gap, <clears throat> I usually don't put too much focus on it and I really don't care that much about it. So we saw that during the early Asian session, we continued to move to the upside right here. This is where we had our first market structure shift to the downside during Asia. Right here, we already got into 1 a.m. We continued further to the downside, further to the downside. And then right here at 3 a.m., if I turn on my ICT kill zones indicator, right here at 3 a.m., we saw this down closing candle right here. And we pretty much just cut straight through the new week opening gap, hitting our previous day low right here. This is also being drawn by the Session Pro indicator. <clears throat> you can turn that on or off in the settings. So yeah, we took out the previous day low and we also wicked inside of this daily fair value gap. So we had a daily fair value gap. If I go up to the higher time frame, let me turn it off quickly. This is the daily fair value gap that we wicked inside of. So if we go back to the five minute time frame, watching price action, we can see that during London, we had this quick drop into our sell side target below the previous day's low without really a good entry opportunity. Because as you can see, we cut right through the new week opening gap. We didn't even get a rejection wick. So usually what we'd like, what we would have liked to see is, for example, a close below the new week opening gap with a candle like this, a strong bearish move candle and a pullback right inside of the new week opening gap as sort of a retest where we could have entered into the draw on liquidity, which would have been the previous day low or Friday's low right here from the PM session. All right, so because we didn't really get an entry in this three to four hour timing window, of course, once we took out that sell side and we hit that daily fair value gap, we pretty much just continued to range. We formed two equal highs and two equal lows. Let me draw that up within the rollover period. So this is pretty much what I regard as the rollover period from 5 a.m. New York local time all the way over to 8 a.m. New York local time. All we saw up until 7.45, so 15 minutes before that new New York session is starting, <coughs> we had two equal highs above and two equal lows below. And we pretty much just kept bouncing within that range. And then at 8 a.m., well, a little bit of before 8 a.m., we touched the new week opening gap and we immediately rejected. <clears throat> we made one more move inside of the new week opening gap and just look at the precision here. We touched it, we pulled back, we came inside of it and we've been to the tick perfectly been rejected, bearish single thing candle. And now we're getting, because we didn't have any major 8.30 news today, <clears throat> We do not have to be worried about the 8.30 opening. This is the 8.30 opening. No high impact news, so nothing to worry about here. But right before the 9.30 market open, which happened right here, this massive bullish engulfing candle happened. <clears throat> we had a further retracement. We cleared a short term low. <clears throat> so theoretically, most people would treat that as, a, that as a market structure shift. But this was just a quick sweep of internal liquidity from this move to the upside to hunt a few stops before the market actually reverses up. And this was a dead giveaway to me, the five minute close above the new week opening gap. And from here on, we can pretty much go to the one minute time frame. This is not really a model or anything, but this would confirm strong bullish momentum for me. Of course, we have left behind quite a few discounts right up here from the five minute that we could now look forward to target. And we're gonna going to take a look at that on the one minute time frame in a second. So right here, we still haven't closed above that five minute fair value gap, pretty much the fair value gap or the discount that has been left behind. 
while we were cutting through the new week opening gap for the first time during the London session. So if we drop it down to a one minute time frame, what we can see, we had the 9.30, pretty strong move. We cleared that sell side. We had a strong displacement. You could also call this an order block. <clears throat> what I like to call an order block is a candle which took sell side liquidity could also just be internal sell side liquidity it doesn't always have to be external at the <clears throat> extremities of a range or of a let's say for example it doesn't always have to be at a significant high or low this is enough we had the 929 candle with no wick to the upside that's really important and a strong displacement candle what i usually do then is i place my buy limit order right at the high of this candle because ideally this candle doesn't have a wick and this is a confirmed order block for me i place my stop a little bit below the slow but yeah it's right at 9 30 so it's quite a risky entry but as we can see momentum continued from this bullish order block right here and we close above the new week opening gap also on the one minute chart <clears throat> from here on we continued further to the upside and to the upper five minute fair value gap right here. We had some, yeah, consolidated for a little bit. We had this rejection right here. And then again, this placement with no wick to the upside. So this is not really a high probability order block, but still, if I'm watching the price action on a one minute chart, this is what I like to see. I don't want to see another close below this candle. Once we saw the displacement, so this could have, been, could have been a continuation entry, of course a higher risk and a lower probability than the one we saw right here, because right here we cleared a short term low. Let me actually draw this in, um, short term low cleared. And we are also within our 9.30 to 11 a.m. timing window where I prefer to take my trades. So for a continuation setup, let's say for example, you miss an entry here or you have been waiting to get tapped in on, for example, this fair value gap right here or this fair value gap right there. <clears throat> Could have taken a little bit. Also, what we can see is that we close above this first five minute bullish fair value gap, uh, bearish fair value gap, sorry. So we had to close above. We came back inside of it, formed that order block. We At the beginning, we went a little bit deeper into it and we actually flipped it into an inverted bullish fair value gap now. So basically, once we close above the fair value gap and we go back inside of it, we expect it to pretty much hold support now. Pretty much a previous resistance area that has now been flipped into support if you break it, if you want to break it down in very simple terms. So, yep, we formed this order block, we rejected, and our target, for example, could have been this high right here. All these highs really on the one minute time frame or those two equal highs which currently formed the high of or the pre new york session high no sorry i'm wrong this is actually the current high of the day so on the daily chart at this point in time there hasn't been any higher prices than the ones right here from asia so fair to assume that we are likely going to target those asian highs and to get into this trend <clears throat> you could have either used for example, this inversion fair value gap, this lower probability order block, which still played out beautifully with the continuation to the upside. And you can also see how all the down close candles are being respected. And if you line them up with other confluences, like a fair value gap <clears throat> or multiple fair value gaps that are being respected, that's really important. You don't wicks do the damage. That's a no brainer. Everyone knows about that. Wicks do the damage and bodies tell the story. So, what do we not want to see is a candle close below important fair value gaps if we have met our buy side objective to the upside, which would be the Asian session high or the current high of the day for the New York session. So, yeah, as we follow price to the upside, we can see that we kept on holding support inside of these fair value gaps. So we had quite a few entry opportunities. This fair value gap kept on holding support for quite some time right here. And eventually we took out the high of the day and we had our first market structure shift once we took that out. And this is pretty much our reversal setup right here in plain sight. I took it. <clears throat> the way I took it was I had two fair value gaps right here. 
two discounts that have been left behind within this price action. This is the first one. And if we click for, or wait for one more candle, we can see the second one right here. So this is our typical reversal setup. And now we can also see those two fair value gaps that kept on holding us right here, this one from 9.44 and 9.43, we now actually close below this fair value gap. So this, those two fair value gaps should now act as resistance. So we can now also drag them out to the right <clears throat> to see how price is trading through these old support areas that now have been flipped into resistance. So we have already two fair value gaps. We also have a nice little volume imbalance right in here. <clears throat> right here, that's the volume imbalance I was looking at. And I had limit orders placed right here in this bearish fair value gap, starting from this level with my stop loss one tick above this high with 0.25% risk and another entry right here at the beginning of this fair value gap with my stop loss one tick above this high. All right, so now we could also draw in the breaker block. This would have been a breaker block. We cleared sell side, reversed to the upside, and now we broke through it. So this would be the breaker block or also old resistance that has been flipped into support. And see how beautifully all those fair value gaps and these, they pretty much become clusters. And I like to take entries from the darkest cluster available. So here we have the breaker block. And right now we see the darkest cluster available is actually a little bit lower. So this is where I had my first entry. <clears throat> I placed my limit order right here. My stop one tick above this volume imbalance. So if, because theoretically right now we're assuming that this fair value gap is going to hold us. If not, we have another limit order that is sitting just at this upper fair value gap with our stop loss right here. And usually I split up my risk or I risk a little bit more on that second trade because my take profit of three to one is met faster than on this, depending on the setup. So we can actually see that the first trade would have hit our take profit earlier because the fair value gap and the candle is a little bit smaller. All right, now we're just going to watch and see what price is doing. We're also within a silver bullet hour right here. That's being shown by the ICT kill zones. Where do we have it? New York silver bullet from 10 to 11. <clears throat> Let's wait if we get tagged in. All right, so that first trade we got filled and we already have been stopped out. So we can pretty much throw this straight into the bin, but that's part of it. We also had two community members who put their stop right above here. And I'm going to say something about that very soon. We're just going to see how this played out. So we initially saw some rejections, but eventually once I've been tagged in in this upper trade, I've also been stopped out because I like to keep my stop small so I don't have to look for such a deep retracement. The issue I had with the with the entry right at this upper fair value gap and my stop one tick above the current high of the day would have been that I would pretty much need price to drop through the new week opening gap. And also this inversion bullish fair value gap pretty much, yeah, we had to drop in super deep discount and you I don't know, that's just me. I like to keep my stops small, so my take profit isn't too far away. So as we can see, we would have to have a significant move to the downside. And in my opinion, that's just higher probability to have tighter stops. And target a three to one, which is just above the um, new week opening gap and all the other discounts that are available. So yeah, that's my play, but <clears throat> Of course, I have been stopped out on this trade, which is not really a problem to me because I'd expect these fair value gaps to hold and also I would also expect that they are being respected so that we are not getting a candle closure above these fair value gaps because right now I would look at them or resistance being flipped into support to continue to look for higher prices. <clears throat> but what we saw right here is that we actually didn't form a higher high. And here's a very important point on our NASDAQ chart. If we take a close look at this, we can see, let me go to the one minute time frame. <clears throat> right here, this is the exact same point in time. We formed our first high. 
had our pullback formed a new higher high. We already had our market structure shift also here on NASDAQ. So we had our market structure shift here on ES and also on NQ right here at 10, 10. So what happened next? On NQ, we actually took out our most recent high. On ES, we left our most recent high in place. So we cleared once more buy side on NQ before shifting structure again. Of course, an entry right up here, unless you trade a turtle soup setup where you expect this to happen. The only entry would have received on NQ would have been a nice entry right here after the market structure shifted. And now we actually see, so the same thing I would have done right here. Let me go over to this example quickly and talk a little bit about this. Once again, of course, we have a first market structure shift that failed, which would have been this one right here. We closed below it. We had a fair value gap left behind. I would have placed my stop loss one tick above here. I would have been stopped out. Of course, that will, that is inevitably going to happen on the one minute time frame. But that's okay. I don't have a problem with that because I'm still waiting for that short because also in NQ, we took out the current high of the day. We did not clear Friday's high. Unfortunately, was it Friday's high? <clears throat> no, it wasn't even Friday's high, but we certainly cleared the Asian session high as we did on the S&P 500. <clears throat> so we got another market structure shift. So we cleared sell side, trapping traders short, like for example, me. Then we cleared buy side liquidating all those short sellers who place their stop just above this high <clears throat> getting long traders ready to enter into the market again and quickly liquidating them as well but right here we had our second market structure shift again we have two bearish fair value gaps so what i do is i place my first entry right here on the slower fair value gap with my stop loss <clears throat> Just one tick or a few ticks right here on NQ. It's a little bit harder above the high. So I would have been stopped out on this trade. And my second position would have been placed right here. So as I'm being tagged out of my first entry, I'm already tagged in into the second trade. And yeah, usually it doesn't happen that we get retracements. Or of course it happens sometimes that we get reversals like this. But... <clears throat> yeah, sometimes we just get a pullback into a discount PD array and continue further to the upside. But this would have been my setup right here, 55. Let's go for 60 ticks. No, 60 ticks, yeah, right here on NQ. And again, we target a 3 to 1. This would have been our take profit target. And as you can see, we could have easily continued trailing it at least to the new week opening gap below these lows. But yeah, like this, our 3 to 1 would have been hit. Otherwise, if you would have placed your stop loss a few ticks above the high right here that has been formed, that already cleared sell side liquidity. <clears throat> That's why I'm expecting this fair value gap to hold and not to clear buy side liquidity once more. It already has been taken. Our free to one risk reward would now be right at the top of this new week opening gap or right inside of this new week opening gap. Also not a bad stop loss placement. But that's just the way how I place my stops. So this was our reversal setup on NQ on the one minute time frame. And if I hop over to the five minute time frame, if the one minute time frame, for example, is a little bit too fast for you, you could have just simply waited. And let me clear this here quickly. We can see we formed higher high, higher high, higher high. So our most recent lowest point right here was sitting there we didn't leave behind a fair value gap on the five minute that we could have entered on so we continued breaking down holding support with the candle bodies remember the candle bodies are what counts inside of this new week opening gap but also on nq we did not clear the previous day low as we did on es during the london session so i was fairly confident that after clearing the asian session high let me bring that up again <clears throat> that we are eventually going to take out the previous day slow and targeting the London lows, which I labeled right here as sell side. And we're not going to bounce off here to continue into further buy side. We already cleared that, that's done, but we still have something left to do, which would have been the previous day slow right here. 
we had a beautiful fair value gap left behind. I placed my limit order, had my stop a few ticks above right here, and it played out to a beautiful 3 to 1 risk reward to the previous day's low right here. So this was a perfect setup. I pretty much had to take it. And it also hit my take profit target within 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes roughly. And we actually continued even deeper right here on NQ. So very simple setup on both the one minute and five minute time frame. The big difference here is that on the five minute time frame, you would have only received one entry into the continuation trade short. Also in the macro between 10.50 and 11.10, if you take a close look, right here, this candle is a 10.50 candle, right here is the 11.10 candle. So we had a retracement and a extension macro to the downside right here it's already 11.15 but it only took until 11.20 until it finally hit take profit so a very high probability time i know it's not really the silver bullet hour i mean it was the entry was inside of the silver bullet hour so yeah you could call this a silver bullet setup yeah and this was pretty much the price action in queue and what i wanted to say is that only on the five minute you only took one trade and this turned out to be a winning trade while on the one minute time frame you would have entered right here it would have been a losing trade and that you you might have lost some confidence in the reversal setup and you might have ignored that second setup or let's say you've been triggered into that first short from that lower fair value gap and you've been stopped out and you didn't place your limit order in time so you didn't get filled right here and now you're hoping and seeing ah oh, come on is maybe price is coming back into this area well it didn't and you would have watched price falling all this way already below the new week opening gap and you would have very likely chased something hopped into the trade and yeah in the end of the day it's a little bit harder to follow your trading plan on the one minute time frame unless you're a very yeah seasoned trader who's been doing this for quite some time all right, so this was the five minute entry, only one entry. And here we had potentially two entries or three entries. We've been stopped out two times and the entry worked out one time right here from this upper fair value gap at 1019. All right, this has pretty much been a price action in queue. Quick little recap, let me go over to ES again because that's actually the one we've been looking at. And the point I wanted to make when I switched over to NQ is that on ES, we didn't form this higher high as you can see we formed a high and a lower high right here we formed a high and a higher high so we also have active smt divergence at this time i already lost two trades <coughs> and i actually blew my apex account those 17 bucks 90 percent discount accounts because i'm trading them very aggressively i'm risking literally 10 contracts so five here five there and it actually happened to blow the account for me. And yeah, so anyway, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I've been stopped out. That's all cool because I had quite a few Apex accounts. I was able to quickly switch my accounts right here and yeah, enter into a second trade, which happened to be right after I saw, okay, we had this active SMT divergence right here compared to NQ. We had another move to the downside. We didn't really had a new market structure shift, but now I still expected these odd um, fair value gaps, inverted fair value gaps to act as resistance. So because they haven't been used as support. So basically the idea was we had those bullish fair value gaps right here that kept on holding price to the upside into the drawn liquidity, which would have been the high of the day. We closed above it and then we had this displacement leg to the downside where we closed below those two fair value gaps. We've been rejected from this one right here, the five minute inversion fair value gap, if you remember correctly. Yep, that's a five minute inversion. We had this last move to the upside where NQ actually took out buy side once more before also shifting market structure. At this point in time, NQ already shifted market structure and cleared the high. We had SMT. We had some sort of a six sister setup and now or this breaker block for example this bearish fair value gap this bearish fair value gap where we now would like to or where we would have liked to see 
support after closing above them or above these we yet didn't hold support and we had a massive displacement to the downside we didn't hold support at all in here so once again now i'm looking at them if they can hold resistance so i place my limit order on this upper fair value gap right here once again stop loss one tick above the candles high i didn't use the slower fair value gap because yeah i wanted to see price reach into this breaker block this is essentially what happened i targeted a three to one also below the new week opening gap i took partials at two to one and we still haven't had that confirmed market structure shift but i anticipated it which happened pretty quickly and we filled in this new week opening gap where i took most of my partials and i think i only had one contract on until it hit my take profit which it eventually did and it continued to run into all the sell side so yeah also a nice one minute setup and if we go up to the five minute what we saw right here similar to what we saw on nq just at a lower place on nq we saw this fair value gap on the five minute time frame a little bit higher and we had plenty of room into the previous day slow right here on es the law of the day is not actually that far away let me compare it on once more so you know what i'm talking about right here on nq here's our previous day low that hasn't been taken out during london so we had left behind sell side liquidity at with the previous day slow friday slow right here and our fair value gap happened to be if we measure the range from our low to the high above the 50 percent level so we are in a discount to go short better setup compared to yes i'm going to show it to you right now so we continued now to also close below our fair value gaps that we would have liked to see hold support so we saw we cut right through them when they should have acted as resistance and now we cut right through them when they should have been inverted and acted as support so now we look at them to hold resistant resistance once more we had our market structure shift on the five minute time frame let me get rid of all this all those one minute drawings we had the market structure shift right here the only market structure shift that was valid right here we had a market structure shift but on a five minute time frame this was a up close candle this looked more like a upside continuation if you ask me of this five minute inversion we closed above this bearish fair value gap so now we would like to see it to hold us with support it happened so i wouldn't have treated this as a valid market structure shift at least on a five minute time frame so we close below this inversion now we would like to see it acting as resistance and how did we cut through this we have left behind a bearish fair value gap now so we have stack confluence that this might actually hold us let me use the fair value gap template right here we left behind a volume imbalance we have sell side liquidity here here and obviously below the law of the day which would have been those two equal lows so let's continue we had a rejection of once again our daily fair value gap here do we, we that's it but still because i saw and i also knew that nq didn't take out the law of the day at this point in time nq was just where we've been 1045 hasn't cleared the sell side liquidity i know that es took the sell side liquidity of the previous day slow but it also left behind two equalos right here and i really i said it quite a few times on our discord server that i would like to see those ones being targeted so it would have also been a fair play to take this short on es from where from our stack area of confluence which would have been this fair value gap or this cluster of con uh, of confluence is uh, what I, that's what i like to call it we go for a five handle stop loss with our stop one tick above this candle's high if we place our stop loss all the way above here wouldn't have made sense we're looking for a continuation setup and we are right here also in that silver bullet hour i would simply target the law of the day which would have been a 3.37 re risk reward which would have acted as enough sell side liquidity with those two equal lows let's see we've been tagged into this trade 
we immediately reject it. We cut right through the new week opening gap again. That's what we like to see. And we continued into sell side. We pulled back to the new week opening gap. It kept on holding resistance, bearish engulfing candle, and the final drop into our target. So now we covered both five minute continuation setups or silver bullet setups into sell side on both NASDAQ and the S&P 500. We also covered all the one minute setups that we saw on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. If we go back, those have been the one minute setups that hit a easy three to one risk to reward. And if you would have let it run into the obvious draw on liquidity, which would have been right here, it would have been a 6.21 risk to reward. Of course, on a one minute time frame, because you see more setups, you have more market structure shifts, you also have more losing trades throughout the day. And if you can't handle, let's say, a streak of, let's say, three or four losing trades while trying to catch the reversal, and then you maybe missed out on that fourth opportunity, which actually played out, and now you're super mad and you start revenge trading and doing all sorts of other shit. Yeah, that's that's pretty much why you should move up to the five minute time frame. Because on a five minute time frame, you only had one market structure shift that could have been counted as valid. You had a displacement cut through inversion fair value gaps, leaving behind new fair value gaps. We take the upper one. And also if we measure our range from high to low right here, we can see that these fair value gaps right here also have been above the 50% level. The 50% level or the equilibrium also perfectly lines up with the 50% level of the new week opening gap. So overall clean setups for the Monday session. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful and you have learned something from it. If you did, make sure to join our Discord server and also to join our daily discussion. We are doing, I'm sharing my analysis and, and I'm doing a lot of tape reading on our Discord server. The link for that is in the video description below. And yeah, let me quickly exit the replay mode and see what we're looking at right now. So we are deep in discount. We are inside this daily bullish fair value gap. We took out the low of the day, pre 930. So we took out the high and low of the day, pretty much just extending the range so far. We will see what we're going to get within the PM session. I'm not going to trade it as I had quite a few nice trades during the AM session. No need to continue to trade. And yeah, London didn't give a nice setup today as we had a straight drop into our draw on liquidity, which would have been the daily fair value gap and our previous day slow right here. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will be back tomorrow for another trade recap of the price action that we saw during London and also New York.